हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द रिवीजन कोर्स और फास्ट ट्रैक कोर्स ऑफ यू जी सीनेट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक साइंस सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव लर्न अबाउट वेव गाइड्स एंड सम ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ वेव गाइड्स सो वी प्रोसीड फर्दर एंड लर्न सम मोर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ओके सम मोर कॉन्सेप्ट रिगार्डिंग रेक्टेंगुलर वेव गाइड सम मोर फॉर्मूलाज रिगार्डिंग द रेक्टेंगुलर वेव गाइड ओके इन दिस वीडियो इफ यू आर फर्स्ट टाइम टू माई चैनल please consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video notifications from my channel okay so uh, two characteristics we have already seen right so cut off wavelength and cut off uh, uh frequency okay so now the third characteristic we'll see so which is dominant mode dominant mode okay so very very important so they'll ask you what is the dominant mode in rectangular wave guide okay if uh, t t mode is there the dominant mode if t is t wave is propagating the dominant mode when tm wave is propagating okay so in t and tm mode propagation so you have to learn about dominant mode okay so what is dominant mode it is the mode it is the mode of wave guide it is the mode of wave guide which produces which produces low cut off frequency low fc okay and high cut off wavelength and high lambda c it is the mode of wave guide which produces low cut off frequency okay so the what will happen if the cut off frequency is low so wave guide will pass all the waves okay so from lesser frequency even if the waves are uh, propagating if the wave propagating with lesser frequency also it will be propagated okay so such type of modes are called as dominant modes so dominant modes are the modes of the wave guide which produces low cut off frequency and high cut off wavelength so this is the desired uh, conditions for a mode which is said to be a dominant mode it is said to be dominant the name only suggest so it is said to be dominant when the frequency when the wave even if the wave frequency is less it should be in a position to pass the wave through it such mode is called as dominant mode okay so when t waves are propagating the dominant mode is t10 the dominant mode is t10 this is very important point which you have to remember so this is the dominant mode when t waves are propagating okay similarly the dominant mode in tm is tm double one tm double one okay so these two points which you have to remember so for t mode propagation the dominant mode is t10 and for tm mode propagation the dominant mode is tm double one so sometimes in the problems they will not give you uh, m and n values instead they will give you the wave is propagating in dominant mode so you must be in a position to uh, remember this and then substitute that uh, m value as sorry m value as uh, m value as 1 and n value as 0 if the wave is propagating uh, so the mode is dominant mode okay so this is the important point fourth is degenerative modes degenerative modes okay so the uh, degenerative mode so which type of modes are called degenerative modes so degenerative mode the modes which produce the modes which produce same cut off frequencies same cut off frequencies and same cut off wavelengths and same cut off wavelengths 
are said to be degenerative modes okay so t m n and t m m n modes are degenerative modes all t e m n so suppose t e double one and t m double one these are degenerative modes okay degenerative mode similarly t uh, something t21 and uh, tm21 okay so these m comma n are variations right so number of times the wave is getting variated due to reflection so it may change its direction so when it's changing it when it is changing its direction there will be some variations so if the number of variations is 2 so we'll write m value as 2 okay so if the variation is along y direction if the uh, if suppose if you have a te21 te21 means so here m value is 2 m value is 2 and n value is 1 so that means the wave has uh, undergone two two variations that is due to reflection there is variation of two times okay so there is variation of two times along x direction and there is only one time variation along y direction okay so that is the importance of te21 te21 means uh, m is equal to and n is equal to 1 so wave has uh, undergone variations along x direction two times and in y direction it has undergone the variation only one time okay so i hope you have understood the modes and the dominant mode clearly okay so with this i'll uh, go for the next characteristic so guided wavelength guided wavelength it is not the cutoff wavelength so cutoff wavelength is the wavelength at the boundary that is entering of the waveguide so it is the condition which we have to which the em wave has to satisfy before entering the waveguide okay so that is the difference between cutoff wavelength and guided wavelength so guided wavelength is after entering after entering of em wave into the rectangular waveguide so what is the wavelength of wave uh, wavelength of the em wave is given by guided wavelength okay so it is the wavelength of em wave inside the waveguide inside the wave guide okay so its formula is given by 1 by lambda naught whole square is equal to 1 by lambda c whole square plus 1 by lambda g whole square so lambda g is called guided wavelength okay lambda c as we know it is called cutoff wavelength cutoff wavelength and lambda naught wavelength in free space okay free space wavelength okay so sixth is uh, phase velocity vp okay sixth is phase velocity so vp is given by omega by beta so if the uh, beta varies linearly with frequency Be beta varies linearly with frequency so we'll consider phase velocity okay we'll consider phase velocity so phase velocity is given by the formula v by root of 1 minus fc by f whole square so this is also equal to 1 by root of 1 by 1 minus lambda by lambda c whole square so this is the formula which you have to remember for phase velocity so if uh, if the em wave if the propagation constant of em wave varies linearly with frequency we will consider phase velocity that is velocity of the wave inside the waveguide again 
okay so that is called as free phase velocity why why we are considering phase velocity because it is varying that which is varying propagation constant of em wave inside the waveguide is varying linearly with frequency then we will consider phase velocity okay and this is the formula which you have to remember okay so uh, what is the free in free space in free space what is uh, v v is equal to c v is equal to c into 3 in 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second so generally what is v so v is equal to 1 by root of mu epsilon 1 by root of mu epsilon for free space v is equal to c okay so if you take uh, that v is equal to suppose uh, we'll take it as vc that is velocity uh, of light in uh, velocity of light we'll take it as vc then what we'll have vp is greater than vc okay so if you substitute here c by something so if in the place of v if you substitute c so c by something means this is greater value so vp is greater value so vp is greater than vc similarly if the wave which is propagating inside the waveguide varies non-linearly with frequency if beta varies non-linearly with omega okay with a frequency omega then we'll consider group velocity vg which is given by dw by d so, uh, dw by d beta okay so dw by d beta will take so its uh, formula is given by vg is equal to v into root of 1 minus fc by f whole square is equal to v into root of 1 minus lambda by lambda c whole square okay so for uh, uh, free space again v is equal to this only v is equal to 1 by root of mu epsilon so vc if you consider for uh, free space so vc so vc multiplied by something so vg is always less than vc vg is always less than vc so if you consider all the three if you consider all the three so vg is less than vc vc is again less than pp so this is the relationship very very important because this type of questions only will be asked in ugc net okay in december 2019 there uh, also one question came from rectangular waveguide that we'll discuss in the next video okay